DC wiring and finishing up the off-grid shed. Let's take a closer look. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I did the final connections last night. The system is up and running. We are running off solar right now. Batteries are being charged. It's a fairly overcast but bright day. We're making a little bit of power, and I thought it'd be a good time to show you some of the DC wiring as well as some of the components. So let's go ahead and start with the solar. In a previous video, we mounted the solar on the roof and I ran everything into the combiner box outside. And since that video, I've went ahead and run the lines inside. They follow this top line and it runs over to this disconnect. This is a midnight baby box with a 30 amp DC breaker. From there, it goes down and into the MPP LV2424. Looking at the AC side of things, when power comes into the shed, it comes through the sub panel. This breaker is uh, AC power, and this one is AC power that goes to the MPP solar inverter. And then I'm using a manual transfer switch. And some people say, well, why use a manual transfer switch when the MPP solar uh, does it automatically? Well, yes, it does switch automatically between line power and solar power and battery. But if I want to completely isolate the solar and just run off uh, line power or the grid, I can use this transfer switch. The transfer switch right now is in the lower position, so it's running off the MPP. Um, if I want to switch it just to utility and run the whole shed off grid power, I, all I have to do is flip this up and it's really quick. You may have saw a flash there and I'll switch it back to uh, the MPP. And uh, that's pretty easy. So again, this is a great way to bypass the uh, solar panels, the MPP, the batteries. If I just run off grid power, I go up. If I want to just run off um, the solar system here, um, just like it's intended to, I would go ahead and just switch it down. For 99% of the time, this is going to be in a down position. The only time I could really see uh, going in the up position and running solely off utility is if I'm working on the MPP or uh, there isn't any power in the batteries or something goes wrong, I can completely disconnect the uh, solar and just run it normally off grid power. This is my load center. I have three circuits. Uh, the first circuit is for the shed, all the outlets. The second circuit is for the pool. This is why we're doing the whole project is to run the pool off grid and save a ton of money. And then I ran a third circuit just to this outlet over here. This is a dedicated circuit for the battery box. All right, so taking a quick look at the inside of the insulated battery box. So I have three sets of BYD batteries and uh, to show you some of the components. So I am using inline fuse right here, class T 150 amp. Um, and then here's the BMS. I switched from chargery. I just wanted to go super simple and I decided to go with a, a Tech Direct BMS and they make the special adapter so you can use uh, the internal cabling and um, for the uh, individual cells. And I've also gone ahead and ran my own wires to each cell and then they go through a fuse box. It's kind of dark in here. And then these go back to a balancer, to a QNBBM balancer. I'll show a picture of that. And then from there, it's just simply um, positive and negative out. Um, the BMS just works off the negative. There's also one more fuse in here. It's an inline fuse. Um, I don't have a lot of faith in this thing right here. So uh, I may cut this one out, but for right now, I'm just keeping it in. So yes, this positive line is actually double fuse. So I have the class T fuse and then I have a blade fuse back there. So we do that three times. The batteries come out of the box. Let me show you those connections. Coming out of the battery box, I have three sets of positive and negative wires and they connect into 175 amp hour style Anderson plugs. Decided to go with these plugs because it would be really easy to disconnect the battery box Let's say I want to work on the battery box or I need to get the battery box out of the shed in a hurry. I can just pull the plugs and wheel the box away. Now along with labeling all the components and circuits, I also need to take care of some wire management issues. 
That'll be my next step in the project. So three of those batteries parallel into these bus bars. I have inline battery switches for each BYD battery for the positive. They combine here into this bus bar. This is all DIY right here. I uh, got the bus bar. And uh, I think one of the best things about this is I went ahead and 3D printed the bus bar holders inside. I'm very happy with how those came out. And then from, from the positive side, it goes up to a fuse block. This is a Blue Seas big block. And then it's two watt cable. And then it goes up to the inverter. Over on the negative side, same thing. Four gauge wire coming in. I used all four gauge here. I didn't go too crazy on that wire. Uh, because I'm not going to be pulling a lot of load or a lot of energy out of these batteries. So it comes into the bus bar. Again, um, custom print bus bar holders. I designed and made these. And then it comes up 2 watt into a, another negative switch here for uh, the negative side. And then from there it goes into the inverter. I decided to put this in because I want to be able to completely isolate the DC side if I had to work on the inverter. So I can shut off the positives down here for each battery, and then I can eliminate this potential here on the DC side. So go ahead and show you what's going on with the MPP. So we have a load of about 130 watts or so. Um, that's mostly because of uh, the battery box and the lights in the shed right now. But uh, it's sort of overcast. It's sunny, but it's uh, overcast at the same time. It's not clear sun, so we're just pulling in about 340 watts and go through some of the other things here about eight amps seven or eight amps going to the batteries and the batteries are at 26.6 volts i have this set up to uh bulk charge to 27.1 and floating will be at 26.7 I'm also using uh, three battery go monitors for each of the BYD batteries so I can monitor everything on each cell. The wiring comes off each fuse block from each battery. So I have three monitors in total. So for the most part, I get everything done. I just have a few things left. I have to do some cable management. I need to label all the components, circuits, switches, and so forth. And I want to go ahead and make some custom 3D printed enclosures for those battery monitors so they can sit better on top of the case all right guys thanks for watching i do appreciate you checking this out and uh, hopefully this has been helpful if you're planning on doing a solar project or you're just interested in this kind of stuff please like subscribe ask a question leave a comment i'm curious to know what you guys think of my setup i've been working on it for a while off and on when i had time and uh I'm actually kind of sad because uh, it's sort of finishing up now, but I'm happy to be using it. And I'm looking forward to this summer when we're going to power our above ground pool with this solar setup. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.